Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Trust you're well on this Wednesday evening. Wednesday evening, we're halfway through the week. A little bit tired, a little bit, oh my goodness, quite a week. Let me ask you a question. Could it be that uh, you're stuck right now, that you're stuck in the wrong job? Yeah, you're doing it. It's okay. Works out okay. Pays okay. But it's wrong. Could it be that you really are in the wrong place? Maybe at the wrong time. Something that's pretty good, but wrong for you. Just not right. And the goal is to be literally in the place just right. Can that happen? Can you make that happen? Can we change the way things are going in our life? Can we as Christians do something about that? Well, today, on uh, The Jesus Entrepreneur, we're going to uh, take a look at that and see if we can learn a few things. As we say, we learn things here mostly by accident, but they're all by design. I'm Stan Houston. This is the Jesus Entrepreneur, and we're going to see if we can get you unstuck right now. And here we go. Once again, Stan Houston, and I'm calling on the wisdom of Welchel. My good friend Hugh Welchel of the Institute for Faith, Work, and Economics, and we keep in touch. We have similar hearts and passions, and we're kind of full of lots of stuff, and uh, we like to exchange that from time to time. And today, uh, Hugh put out a very provocative little article. It caught my attention, because it's not true for me and yet I even have some hard times from time to time, but I know a lot of people. You know what? They are in the wrong job. And I can guarantee you that a good many of you are. You're in the wrong job, at the wrong place, at the wrong time, and you're in a job that is not using your strengths. And my good friend David McKnight, who's going to be with us from time to time, will tell you that oftentimes you just aren't. There's nothing wrong with you, but you're in the wrong place. You're in the wrong job. Well, stuck in the wrong job, five practical tips from a biblical perspective by Hugh Welchel and his good friends at the Institute for Faith, Work, and Economics. And can I just take a little time to uh, kind of read it and share it with you? Of course, I'll make a few comments from time to time, and then I'm going to put a little kicker on the end and... Uh, create a, a little entrepreneurial angst, perhaps, within you. A young man asked me the following question during a faith and work conference that we were both attending. What should I do if I'm stuck in the wrong job? Now, almost all of us can relate to this question because we have all been in jobs that just weren't the best fit. You may have been in the wrong field. Perhaps you didn't enjoy the work, felt surrounded by untrustworthy co-workers, or you just simply had an incompetent, bad boss. Now, the IFWE, that's the Institute for Faith, Work, and Economics blog, recently interviewed Mr. John Kyle, who's the executive director of the Fellows Initiative, and that's a church-based leadership development program for college graduates. And Kyle said that getting stuck in the wrong job is one of the biggest fears of his generation, of this generation. More than anything else, new college graduates tell me that they fear getting stuck vocationally. Most young people want exciting jobs that are interesting and allow them to make a difference in the world. But they are sometimes driven by the desire for bragging rights from landing the big job. Some recent graduates fear being stuck working in a cubicle on spreadsheets all day. Others fear they might make a big mistake with their early career choices. The reality is that some people, whether recent graduates or not, do indeed get stuck in the wrong job and they need guidance. They need help. Most people would tell them to quit and go find something else. <laughs> yeah, that's big help. But depending on the job market, that may not be easy or even possible. There are many reasons people may not be able to leave their current job, perhaps a tough economy, a family commitment, or just simply limited opportunities in their field. 
So what do you tell someone who is stuck in the wrong job? Number one, there are no perfect jobs. We read in Genesis 3 that all work will be difficult. That's right, because of the fall. Years ago, Scott Peck said, life is difficult. Great word. That's how he began his book. No job will be a perfect fit for any of us in this world. That being said, usually you will move into a job that is a better fit as you gain more experience in the workplace and learn more about your unique gifts and abilities and strengths. Okay. Number two, find meaning in what you do. Now, most people are highly unsatisfied when they believe that their job has no meaning or purpose and provides little opportunity for them to learn and grow. Yet, as Christians, we who understand the real biblical meaning of work, we should understand that each task that God has called us to do, even the stuff we don't like, has meaning to Him, no matter how mundane that work appears to us. One of my mentors said uh, one time when I was out pulling weeds to make the yard better, he said, uh, thank you for doing some kingdom work. <laughs> I thought about that. Yeah, <laughs> I guess in some respects it was. Now, number three, try to improve your current situation. Now, no matter what our job is, uh, we need to do it with excellence. Far too often we tend to slack off and just do the minimum to get by when we don't like the job we are doing. By doing your best, you increase the chances of your getting noticed and finding additional opportunities to steer your job description towards something that is a better fit. Now, uh, I've done a program which I might play sometime <laughs> called How to Quit Your Soul Sucking Job. And perhaps I'll put that on the air sometime. But exactly what you need to do is when you don't like your job, you make a decision to do it extremely well. Because that will help you get out of it and get someplace else. So uh, try to improve your current situation. A lot of this is uh, the bad guys are playing with your head. And one of those bad guys is the demon, the dark spirit himself, um, make sure, get up in the morning, seek the face of the living God and say, how am I going to live out this day to honor and glory? Hey, keep your options open. That's right. The improvements you make to your job situation may make things more tolerable. Okay. And, uh, but you should always be open to the next opportunity. Always be building your network and meeting people that you can help that are willing to help you. And some additional tips to remember. Somebody wants to get me on the phone, but I'm going to keep talking to you. <laughs> okay. Number five, do continue to work hard and do exceptional work. Assess what do you, you don't enjoy about your job so that you can minimize the time you spend doing unwanted tasks. Now, this is real practical stuff. Look for new ways to bring value to your organization. Now, you may find opportunities to do other types of work within your current situation and current company. Now, remain open to new opportunities that, because you may not be able to leave your job right now. But who knows, circumstances may change. Continue to learn new skills on and off the job. That's vital. That's why you should right now, you should talk to me about getting media training in the world to come. Starting now, starting yesterday, if you know how to use the radio, the television, the video, the modern media, you will be much more valuable. I guarantee it. It is a media world. Right now, start learning to do what I'm doing right now, and that is helping you understand how to be a media person. Hey, so there's some good news. Now, don't Quit your job until you have another one lined up. Hmm. Maybe not, but that's the safe thing to do. 
But keep in mind, sometimes you may have to take an entrepreneurial risk. You may have to run and jump. But I understand the feeling. Assume that the job is the problem. God may be trying to teach you something uh, that uh, about where you're currently placed. You know, maybe he wants you to find some other place. Think you're stuck? There is usually more leeway to uh, alter your job situation than you think. And uh, don't complain. That's right. Don't complain about your job to others. That is so important. Okay? That can help. Life is indeed a journey. What we do here is very important. But our final destination is a new heaven and a new earth. You know what? Maybe I just add this to this. Is There's that old gospel song, This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. Well, there's some truth to that. And there's some truth that's not there. Because right now, this is where you're at. That's right. Uh, And particularly if you're young and looking forward to a long life, this is where you're at. But at the same time, as one of my mentors said, and this was a man who literally counseled some of the top Fortune 50 executives in their career path. A number of years ago, he's now gone to be with Jesus. Uh, He was 94 when he died last year. It broke my heart when he died. But he said, Stan... The M word. Have the ability to stay mobile. He said the key to business and life success is movement. Keep moving. Be mobile. You know, think always. Where is the next move I'm going to make? Or keep moving. He said it's not the plan. It's the movement. Now just think about that. God wants to teach us all along the way, especially at work. We need to learn to navigate life's lessons. We need to solve problems. And we need to discern what to do next based on God's desire and design. Life is difficult. Work is difficult. This is the way it is. And uh, God then puts us in situations where we will more and more, because of the difficulties, we'll learn to depend on him. As Sarah Young says in Jesus Calling, uh, Jesus is calling us to call on him. Often. All the time. Hey, Jesus, I need to talk to you. I need to be near to you. I need to, you know, know you and love you and uh, know more about you. I need to be more present to you. Okay, in Psalm 25, David cried out to God, asked him to direct his path. Show me the right path, O Lord. Point out the road for me to follow and lead me by your truth and teach me, for you are the God who saves me. How cool is that? You are the God who saves me. Hey, may that always be, uh, no matter what kind of job you have, the uh, good times with that. So, we'd like to know a little bit more about you. So, uh, by the way, my friends at the Institute for Faith, Work, and Economics, uh, you can check them out. They would love to hear from you. Just Google them out. Hugh Welchel, the Institute for Faith, Work, and Economics. And uh, they've got some things that could be very helpful and useful to you. And uh, we also have some things that might be helpful and useful to you, too, here at the Christian Entrepreneur Network. TCENglobal.org. TCENglobal.org. And um, there we go. Some good things to know in case you think that uh, perhaps uh, you're stuck in the wrong job what you should do. Well, I'm going to uh, give it just a little entrepreneurial kicker in just a few moments, and uh, then we'll finish up. I'm Stan Houston. This is the Christian Entrepreneur Network. This is the Jesus Entrepreneur. Again, do it right. Do it now. Do your best, and we'll be right back. Tis a gift to be simple. Tis a gift to be free. Tis a gift 
to come down where we ought to be. And when we find ourselves in the place just right, twill be in the valley of love and delight. And when all is said and done, you know what? The job you get will always be a compromise. However, the job that you might create as an entrepreneur might be closer to what you really want. You see, what the entrepreneur does is say, within God's call upon my life, I'm going to take the risk of designing the place and the space that I believe uh, works best for me. So rather than finding a job, I'm going to create one. And what the future will be about is the people who literally find the right job, but they also are creating the right jobs, creating the right opportunities. They are entrepreneurial, creating not only multiple streams of income, but multiple streams of service. S-O-S, my friends, multiple streams of service. And it is multiple streams of service that will give you the best opportunity to land up in the place just right. May it go well with you. There we go once again. As we say, uh, you learn more here by accident than most places by design. Take 20 minutes every day to learn something, uh, grow in some way, and uh, who knows what will happen to you. You might be a world-class expert in no time, and uh, we give you that 20 minutes. We'd love to uh, hear from you. We want you to be on the program. RadioEdge77 at gmail.com, RadioEdge77 at gmail.com. And uh, check us out at tcenglobal.org, tcenglobal.org. Go around and uh, find my good friend Hugh at the Institute for Faith, Work, and Economics. Institute for Faith, Work, Economics. Subscribe to their blog. Be in touch with them like you are in touch with us. And uh, you know what? Then you'll be in tune and in touch with a lot of good stuff. I'm Stan Houston wishing you all the best and blessings. Until next time on the air, bye for now. Thank you.